Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I hope everyone is doing okay. This video is get ready for what's coming. What's coming? Credit card defaults. People are buying their daily needs with credit cards. They're not paying their credit cards. Now they don't have credit cards. They don't have money. That is not good. So what is coming? Uh, hard times is coming <laughs> for some people, but my followers are gonna be okay. Okay, so uh, homemade food that will get you through the recession. So uh, first of all, I want to start with some soup. All right, the reason I am making soup is because this morning, very early, I went to uh, Ralph's. And so I bought these marked down uh, Brussels sprouts, $1.35. Uh, they were, uh, I don't know how much they were. Uh, they're good until the 31st though, so they, we have a little while. So um, you can also make this soup with, if you have a can of peas. It's the same recipe. So with the peas, you heat the peas in a pan. Here's the Brussels sprouts. With the peas, you do not drain the peas. You uh, leave the juice and you heat the peas with salt, pepper, and sugar. With the Brussels sprouts, I cooked them until they were pretty soft, not too soft. And then I added salt, pepper, and sugar and just enough water to cover. Now I fry four pieces of bacon. I have the option of putting this on top of my uh, soup, but I don't think I'm going to need it. So, okay, one thing I made was homemade butter. Just whip your butter in the, uh, your uh, heavy cream in the blender. Uh, keep your eye out, and when you get it on sale, buy some. So I need about a tablespoon or so. And uh, so uh, we, we have to like change. We have to be realistic. What is going on? Most likely some kind of recessionary period is going on. Um, if you're very, very thrifty, you're going to suffer less. So, okay, I have some butter, and uh, so this, now there's been reports that people are buying less fresh fruit and vegetables. So, as usual, I was kind of lucky. Uh, I'm seeing something. I went to the food pantry, there was no food. That week, I went to Ralph's, and there was lots of markdown food. This, that was about three or four weeks ago recently. Uh, not yet, not today, but the day before. There was very little marked down food, but I did find a little bit of stuff. So could it ever be that, um, you know, the, the consumption is down because people don't have money? Uh, I think that might be possible. So today, I went this morning early, and what I was looking for was produce, because there really wasn't any yesterday. So, uh, well, Rhoda, you can't expect to buy all of your groceries marked down. Why not? I, I don't want to spend any money that I don't have to. I don't want to. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, if, if you know the... First of all, um, just as the wars are looking better, uh, then you know, you know, we have two wars. It's not better, so uh, the wars have to be paid for, and, and inflation is the sneaky tax. So it's unrealistic. So uh, what I'm doing is I I uh, fried my bacon drippings. And then I kept my drippings for tomorrow because I'm going to make some refried beans. So 
so um okay so um i just so uh, maybe the reason that the fruit and the people are eating less fruit and vegetables is because if they have less money and the fruit and vegetables are inflated then uh okay i have some shelf stable milk so i want to use this up so um when the consumption is down the price goes up could it ever be okay there's no markdown food could it ever be less food uh shoplifting is up um you know it may be that we're gonna have to have our food delivered if you know people keep shoplifting and the like so okay i got uh four bananas Okay, there was, there was um, bananas, but, and it was a good deal. It was nine bananas for a dollar, but I don't have room in my freezer. And the only reason that I bought these bananas, and we'll come to that in a minute. I could make banana bread though, that's for sure. Okay. So I'm making a thin gravy, a thin white gravy. And then I'm gonna add my broccoli with water and salt and pepper to that. And then I stockpile some good cheese. But if you don't have cheese, your milk is a dairy. You don't need it. So I bought four bananas, a package of Brussels sprouts. Now the Brussels sprouts were a really good deal. And then I got a package of lettuce marked down for $2. That was a good deal. Uh, usually it tells you how much this stuff was. But anyway, I did need some lettuce because I want to eat some salad. So uh, one of the things, so, you know, they want us to eat less uh, meat. Well, people are late eating less fresh fruit and veggies. This soup, though, is good with canned peas. That's why you want to stockpile cans for times like these. And then I bought a bag of um, three small, three, now this was a good, two squash and three small zucchini. So I made um, pickled zucchinis. So if you pickle carrots, you pickle zucchinis, you learn how to make some of this homemade food, maybe on one day of the week do a lot of cooking so you have food in the house okay so uh it was um four bananas a package of brussels sprouts lettuce and a bag of zucchini and yellow squash okay i go to the area where the markdown uh fruit is then i walk to all the um like lunch meats none of that was on sale and it was high hot dogs, that sausages, not really. I go around to milk and yesterday, I, this was good. I got this buttermilk so you can make your own cheese. Just heat your buttermilk until it gets, it starts to almost bubble and it will coagulate and separate into curds and ways. And so then that's why I'm gonna make a salad and I wanna to talk to you about that. Okay, my gravy is looking pretty good. All right, here it is. Uh, you can make it as thin or as thick as you want it. So uh, you might think this is not going to taste good. But this is going to taste good. <laughs> This will thicken up with my thin gravy in a minute too. And if not, I can always add a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to need it. Okay, so in my, my refrigerator, I have a cheese, good cheese that I bought marked down. So basically, we're going to try to locate marked down food. Well, Rhoda, you can't buy all your food marked down. Uh, yeah, we can. We have to. Unless you want to pay full price and have... When you're buying the food marked down, you're buying it at half price. So here's this 
this is really good cheddar cheese it should be just enough and then i could put my uh, bacon in there but i think i'll put it on my salad all right let me uh... so you know what's really helping me is my vegetarian cookbooks So there's less meat and we're eating less fresh fruit and vegetables. So I went to the food pantry a couple times and what you saw was they gave me a lot of fruit and vegetables. What if there's no fruit and vegetables because they're ordering less because uh, there's less buying by the public. What's the food pantry people supposed to eat? Uh, sorry, no food this week. That's what? That seems pessimistic, but that's my experience. Okay. All right. So I'm making some uh, Brussels sprout soup. It can be any kind of vegetable soup. People are eating less fruit. Uh, in fact, it was so bad it was reported on I allegedly that one of the apple tree producers is just liquidating their uh, trees. Uh, people do that sometimes from one generation to the next. Okay, so I've, I've been watching a good vegetarian uh, video and I put it on my Twitter. I don't leave it, I don't leave things forever on there. I switch them up because it feeds better if you have less than 35 uh, tweets. So I was watching this lady who is 102 or four, and she's pretty much, she was a vegetarian, but now she's a pescatarian. And it's on my um, Twitter now X. Okay, so you've heard of the Golden Door, it's the owner. So um, for lunch, she has salad with cottage cheese and nuts. Okay, that's good because I just so happened to have um, made some cottage cheese. So let's have some cottage cheese. So this is starting to come up, heat up nicely. So I will just, I'm going a little bit heavy on the cheese. Uh, because, you know, I had bought this cheese and uh, cheeses. You could put bacon in here, but I don't think I need it. All right, so now um, I bought the lettuce, so let's have some lettuce. Um, it could be lettuce or it could be um, spinach or it could be cabbage. I wasn't that picky. So this is some pretty nice lettuce, and it should last me. Mm, yeah, it's pretty good. I bought um, tomatoes at Walmart. Um, I'm not going to buy bad tomatoes. They're they're not edible when they're bad. They're inedible. <laughs> All right, I think I want my soup a tiny bit thicker, so I'll just add a little bit of, of, of flour. If you just add the flour a little bit at a time, it's not going to get lumpy. Just add a very tiny bit at a time until you get it as thick as you want it. Uh, I think I'll have my uh, bacon on my salad. So think about this lady, 102. And so here is my homemade cottage cheese. I just heated my, um, I just heated my uh, buttermilk until it coagulated. And then uh, she has nuts. She doesn't have bacon because she's a vegetarian. It could be walnuts, but I have, uh, I mean, it could be sunflower seeds, but I have walnuts. I 
I'm trying to change my eating habits because I know that's what's actually going to either make me live aside from exercising. I want to go back to work. It's too, it's too expensive to retire. Uh, you know, I usually do what my son tells me to do, but I said, no, that's not smart. <laughs> Especially when I have the ways and the means to be self-employed. I will just do eBay and um, and the swap meet. All right. Now I'm forgetting. Oh, it's these. These are good. I made these pickles. You guys have seen me. I'm going to tell you again though. Uh, these are zucchini. And so what I'm doing is I am uh, like. What I did is when I bought these little zucchinis, there's some onions in there. I uh, want to come home and pickle them immediately so nothing happens. And so this is enough food for a few meals. Okay, now my soup is looking good. Okay, maybe a little bit more flour. And then I have my bacon drippings for my uh, beans tomorrow. Uh, the bacon drippings could be any kind of beans. It could be, um, so now if you don't have your bacon drippings, you can add a little butter at this point. Okay, now let me give you my pickle recipe, okay. Here we go. And then I will have some salad dressing, whatever I have in there. Okay, so going a little bit vegetarian, nothing extreme though. Okay, wash the cucumbers good with water, put the cucumbers in a bowl and sprinkle with salt and let set for a few minutes. You know, wash them off good with water, but also sterilize them with a little salt. Rinse them, wash good in water. And then I peel most of the uh, skin off because I don't like eating any kind of skin myself. Those are good. Once you get my brine recipe, put the thinly sliced cucumbers and onions. I had red onions that I had bought at the peel too. It was only three small zucchini, so I, um, I, um, I peeled most of the skin off. So then I put a quarter of a red onion sliced thin. I put a little good coarse sea salt. If you're gonna pickle them, it should be deionized, but I just had this. You have to watch out, don't put too much. Um, and then I, I season my cucumbers with pepper, garlic, uh, garlic powder. Then I heated the brine, half a batch. One cup vinegar, one cup water, one tablespoon pickling spice, and a quarter cup sugar to boiling. Then I poured it over the cucumbers that had been sitting a while in the salt. And then I cooled them in the bowl and then I put them in um, the jar. What did I do with that? Here they are. So, uh, can you see the pickling spice and the onions? Okay. So uh, once you get used to, okay, you might have to shop a little bit more often and you might have to shop early in the morning, but it's worth it because you can get your food 50% off or more and you might have to go to a discount shop. Okay, then the next thing I made was I made... I use my old fashioned bread recipe. It took me a long time to find this bread recipe. It's not hard to make. All right, this is coming along good now. All right, so let me cut a little piece. 
with my dull knife. I think I'm just going to get, I'm going to make my bread because I'm getting sick of, uh, I'm getting sick of stale bread. You know, um, I can buy it. I can get it marked down or not. And within a short time, it's stale. And this is my homemade butter. So you got the stuff in your house to make the bread. And I will tell you how to make it in just one minute. have this um this soup um with crackers in your stockpile i stockpile a uh, six packages of crackers a month if you don't have that much money here it is and you don't have that much food in your house you're gonna start. You're gonna start getting more when you start uh, buying your food marked down. So, water, Brussels sprouts, and I just cut them with my knife. I mean my spatula. When they get soft, salt, pepper, sugar, cook them down. Then make your white gravy and add to the grape. Okay, now for the bread. Oh, this is so easy. Okay, what I had was whey from the buttermilk. From the, I cooked the buttermilk down to make the cottage cheese. So all you need is one half cup water, but I use whey. And then I heated that and I cooled it like to a warm bath. And then I added one tablespoon of sugar. The recipe doesn't call for sugar and you probably don't need it, especially if you're using whey. But I always activate my, um, my yeast with, um, with sugar, with honey, with molasses, something like that. And then I stirred that around and I covered it and I let it set for about, oh, five, 10 minutes. And you'll be able to see that it's activated because there'll be like um, a lot of bubbles and everything. So then I put my uh, my activated yeast in a bowl and I added about uh, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Then I started adding the uh, um, flour little by little. I ended up adding about one and a half cups of, of flour and I stirred around to make a, a soft dough. Then I, I turned it out on a board and I kneaded it. And then I put some oil on it and I put it in a, a little uh, bread pan and I um, let it rise and then I baked it at 350. There's the recipe. So if you just get um, some, you can get the flour anywhere, Dollar Tree, anywhere. And then I, you can buy yeast pretty cheap now, but it's not always that cheap. I have this one, or you can use a package. All right. So then there was the, um, then there was the uh, bread, and then I, I had three very large apples, and I made applesauce. Okay, even for me, uh, this is a lot of cooking in one day. But you can see I'm going to have food. And you can get your kids to help you. So I have three apples. All right. I peeled the apples. I cut them in chunks. I put it in water. I added a half cup sugar. You don't have to. That's just, I like my applesauce kind of uh, sweet for eating on pancakes or making applesauce bread. Uh, and then I cooked it down until it was very soft, chopping it with my spatula. I need a new spatula. And when I got it cooked down to my satisfaction, I had these uh, jars. Okay, what I did today was I'm getting my uh, canning jars together, and I washed these good, and these jars have been sterilized. Before I put my... Um, 
applesauce in the jars. I sterilized all these jars because I didn't know how many it, how much it was going to make. Uh, this time I made my applesauce a little bit thicker. And so then my jars, 10 minutes, and then I boiled 10 minutes, and then I cooled them. And I just kept, I added more water, and I kept my water boiling. Then I put my applesauce in my sterilized jars. And don't forget, you have to uh, use a knife and check for bubbles. Then just put your canning lids on. And I just use, I have this old saucepan. And I uh, have the boiling water in there, and I boil 20 minutes. And then um, cover. Then I took them out. You don't need any special equipment. I just got mine out with the spatula and grabbed it with a washcloth. And then I will probably just keep those in the refrigerator, but you don't have to. They're good to go. So I made applesauce. Then I made peanut butter. So why? Because pe homemade peanut butter is, and these, this batch, they all, every batch turns out different. But this batch turned out, oh, oh God. turned out really, really good for some reason. And all it was, was smart and final peanuts. This is what happens when you're making videos late. Uh, I, I want to mention about the tea later. My good vases. Only one is good. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the peanut butter. So, I bought this big bag of peanuts at Smart and Final. And I want to eat this down because, you know, I had a mouse and I don't want any nuts out. So, uh, I just, what I did was, now this was the mess of messes this time. Sometimes. Okay, so what I did was, this is good for breakfast. I uh, got the, the peanuts out of the shell, and then I roasted them. I had a whole cookie sheet full. This is actually a lot of peanut butter. Um, and you can have peanut butter and toast. It's cheaper than avocado toast. And then... Um, I roasted them. These are already roasted, but when you roast them, the peanuts get soft. I roasted them 10 minutes on each side at 250. I put them on the blender and I kept pressing pulse. And I didn't have to add anything at all. But if the peanuts don't break way down, then just add a tablespoon of olive oil or good oil. And if you start making coconut milk, you're going to have coconut oil on the top of your uh, coconut milk when you refrigerate it and you can use that in your peanut butter. So I made peanut butter and the main use of peanut butter is for peanut butter sandwiches. And I also made jam last week. So you might be thinking that's too much cooking. No, this is called a uh, starvation insurance. This is called your kids going to have food. How about seniors with no food? So you could make you could make your cottage cheese one day. You could make your soup one day. What I do is I just put the whole bowl in the um, refrigerator and then I get a little bit out and I eat it every day until it's gone. This could be tomato soup made with milk one can tomato soup one can milk that's good too okay so i made peanut butter bread applesauce uh pickle uh pickled zucchinis and you start eating this way and you're going to feel better okay the thing to know about brussels sprouts you could have you could have ground the Brussels sprouts into um, 
Like with the pea soup, you can put it in the blender and blend it to puree it. You could do that with the uh, Brussels sprouts too, but they taste good in chunks. So all you have to know is you can roast your Brussels sprouts with oil, salt, and pepper. You can use chicken stock half and half. And so if you have evaporated milk, you use that in place of half and half. Cheese, onions, you can grill your onions and your Brussels sprouts. You can roast them, you can do it that way. But I like this better. This is not a big fat mess. All right, let me um, give you a shot of this. So uh, the trick is to start thinking about your food in a little bit different way. Uh, okay. So that's all the cooking I did. And it was quite the big fat mess, but that's okay. It's over now. Okay, so now... Right, so I told you about the food pantry with no food. So you start doing this now so that you don't have a heart attack when you go to the food pantry and there's no food or you go to get marked down food and there isn't any or you, what if the stores weren't open like with the grid down? So, okay, think about the golden door which was a salad with cottage cheese and nuts and then her breakfast, go to my, her breakfast was, um, she had whole grain cereal, but I bought, um, I bought these packages. I'm gonna go see if these are instant oatmeal. I got two of these for, um, for a dollar. I should have bought more. I don't know why I do that. So the way I make oatmeal is a quarter cup oatmeal, a quarter cup raisins, a quarter, a quarter cup half nuts, half raisins, a quarter cup powdered milk, one and a half cups water, and then uh, I'm gonna start trying to eat bananas on my oatmeal. This is cinnamon oatmeal. And I got this at Grocery Outlet. So the two cereals um, I eat are, um, are um, corn flakes, but it could be any kind of whole grain. I got a really nice box of whole grain from the food pantry. And then uh, here's the coconut. One cup coconut to uh, four cups water. Bring it up to almost a, bo a boil, then turn the heat down and um, cook it down. Uh, now the thing about all this cooking is if you can relax when you're doing it, it's gonna be so much better. Because if you try to rush through this much cooking, you'll be a crazy one. Cook it down and then blend it in the blender and then you can strain it or you can just drink it with the bits in. But blend the things that need to be blended quite a bit. Blend them down to nothing. If it's milk, you want to eliminate all the bits of coconut and then refrigerate it and you'll get uh, coconut oil also, you know, start saving your bacon grease. Okay, so now, so think about the, so the salad with uh, cottage cheese and nuts for lunch or vegetables, it doesn't have to be lettuce. And then, you know, some kind of good soup, some kind of cereal with uh, bananas and, uh, she had her cereal with yogurt. I like eating my cereal with milk. I like cooking it with milk and it gives me a big bowl of cereal. Okay, so okay, so that is that. That's what I wanted to say on that. And shop early. The earlier you can shop, the less picked over the food is gonna be. Like today is pizza day, but I think I'm gonna stick to this. This is cheaper than pizza. And it's ready to go. I have plenty of food. And you're not going hungry. Okay, um, now, what we want to do is save money. So cut expenses. Stop spending. Like this morning, I only spent $5. Make homemade food. Buy markdown food. Eat out of the, the food storage. 
Um, now, when times are tough or if bad stuff's happening closer to the election, this is not the end of the bad stuff. Stay in your house and work on your house to prepare for the really bad stuff that might come and keep working. That's my latest thing. I was, I have been retired since I was 62 and I'm almost 70. And I thought there's nothing wrong with you. There's no reason you can't work. Okay. And I want to mention something. If you live in a car, okay. If you live in a car, San Diego is very expensive, but it could be one of the best places because we have the beach, we have the casinos, but we also have these campsites. Like it's called Dos Dios Picos, P-I-C-O-S. Okay, you can only stay a few days. I don't know how often you can stay, but it's really like for campers who are like, like my son went this weekend and they set the tents. It includes the tents and everything. And so it was really kind of hilarious because it was a small tent. And so about two o'clock in the morning, the baby woke up and asked my son and my daughter-in-law, could you sleep outside because she was cramped. They were, they were hiking, ravens came, and as they came, they flew off with the bags of snacks and there was hornets. So that was a good camping experience. And they were fishing and I posted some pictures on my X and my Twitter for you guys to see. So, and this is not the only one, Dos Picos. So uh, if the can, and you can take a shower for a dollar, you need four quarters though. So that is really cheap. Also, we have gyms here. You can join very cheap and get showers there too. And also um, the YMCA. I mean, I think this would be one of the best places to do car living because of the weather. So I wanted to say that, all right, I want to mention something. I heard a prophecy, and this is the prophecy I think is accurate. The prophecy said is, God is giving America another chance. And Jesus and the angels are going through the land. So you want to stay to the good, and you're going to be okay. I mean, it's always been like that. Like think of the um, the Egyptians when the judgments came. It wasn't for God's people. It was for uh, the the idolaters. And I thought that is accurate because nothing new is under the sun. And so what they're saying is it's quite possible there's going to be a revival. And I thought, yeah, I could see that. And I heard years ago that the revival would come um, from the homeless. You know, these people who have suffered this incredible hard times, uh, God turns everything around to the good. So I, I am going with this because this is my experience. Okay, stability is the key. You want water? food, shelter, heat, gas, and cash. So I, I'm i going to also oatmeal or cornflakes with bananas. Okay, so stability is the key. My nickname is Stable Mabel. So people might think I am not that stable, but let's look at a lifestyle characterized by appropriate and well thought out decisions, consistent behavior and moderate mood swings. Words are firm, fixed, sturdy, steady, strong, fast, stout, and secure. So when I was raising my son, I was like smart enough to know that raising my son was my job. Okay, now I wanna talk to you. This is not preaching. This is just like, we have this thing, faith comes by hearing, hearing comes from the word of God. Matthew 7, 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So the Lord and the angels are coming through and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them. So I told you about um, a prophecy and it was the Lord and a man were on a, a tall mountain and a tsunami was coming. 
And the man said to the Lord, what will happen to the people? And the Lord said, perhaps I will save some of them. Even in the worst circumstances, some people are probably going to be saved. Okay, I had a dream shortly afterwards that a man was frantically running on the top of a mountain and the Lord was not there. So then uh, think about everyone who hears his words and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So now what we want to do is go, okay, what is the good? Feed the poor, cast out devils, and heal the sick. So, okay, you can't, you can't, you're not, most of us are not equipped for a perfect, what do you want to call this, ministry? But, I mean, whenever the opportunity presents itself, and so if you, the closer you get to the Lord, the less the evil can stand to be around you. I've noticed that. So, um, so to preserve your own house, um, help the other guy. The most important asset is food. So you're in a house with food and you have water. Okay, I want to talk about uh, tea. Okay, I am very careful with my tea. Here's some of my tea. When I donated the food, I had a big grocery bag of tea. If you have tea and water, you'll have something to drink. Or coffee, if you're a coffee drinker. Tea, coffee, and milk, powdered milk. So if, you, if you're having to eat vegetables and you have cheese, like cottage cheese made out of buttermilk, get it marked down. Or, or really good but, uh, cheese marked down, butter. A lot of this stuff can be made if you have milk. Cereal, bread, cheese, and canned food. So these are the ones. Let me give you a shot of this. So um, what I think happens is you get this like some people will go, you know, I think I better buy some cans of food or I think I better uh, stock up on a little um, extra toilet paper or maybe I better buy some laundry detergent or some dish soap when I see it on, on sale or get up early and go to the um, grocery store where you know they have markdowns and check and see what they have. Um, just start preparing your house little by little for hard times. Like say to yourself, well, what should I do if a depression was coming or a recession was coming? Well, easy. House, don't let anything happen to your house. Food and water and heat. All right, I will see you tomorrow. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all. Bye, you guys.